Hey everybody, in today's topic, I'm going to explain a few useful math-related functions in PHP that you might be interested in. We'll need an HTML document, followed by a PHP script. We will enter in some user input via an HTML form. So let's create a form in our HTML document. Open it. Close it. We will set the action equal to be our index page. Index.php. For the method, let's use post. Let's create a label. Label. Close it. The label will be X. We'll have a user enter in a number. Then let's add an input tag. It's a self-closing tag. The type will be text. The name will be X. Then we need a submit button. Input type equals submit. For the value, let's say total. It's a total button. That's good enough for now. If I'm using the post super global variable, let's say we need x type post, add a set of square brackets, we would like the value of x. I will cache this value within a local variable within my PHP script for convenience. Variable x equals whatever value for x that we receive. Just so that we're sure that everything's working fine, let's echo whatever x is. Echo x. So currently there's nothing in there. Let's type 3, hit total, and there's our number x, which is 3. So here's a few math-related functions you may be interested in. The first is the absolute value function. Let's say we have a total variable as well. I'll declare this variable, but not assign it quite yet. I'll set that to be null. Then later on in my program, we can assign total a value. Total equals, to find the absolute value of a number, type abs for absolute value, followed by a set of parentheses, semicolon. Whatever number or variable you put within this function, abs, it will return the absolute value of that number. We can either put a number in here or a variable. Let's put in x. So variable x. Then I will echo our total. So I'm going to save. I'll type in negative 4. This should return positive 4, which it does. Negative 100.123. 100.123. That is the absolute value function. Let's cover a few more. We have the round function. We can round a number. Let's assign total equal to use the round function. Then we will pass in our variable x. So let's save again. Refresh that. 3.14 rounded is 3. 3.99 would be 4. Now, to always round down, you can use the floor function. So let's copy this line. Replace round with floor. We will always round down. So 3.99 rounded is 3. 4.99 rounded down is 4. There's also seal, meaning ceiling, which will always round up. Replace floor with seal. Let's save. Refresh everything. 3.14 rounded up is 4. 4.14 rounded up is 5. For this next example, we'll need another number. Let's copy our label and our text box. Paste it. Replace x with y. Here and here. We'll need two numbers this time. Let's get whatever y is. So y equals within the post super global variable, we are looking for y. We can use the power function to raise a base to a given power. Let's take our total variable equals power. We'll need two numbers or two variables. What is x raised to the power of y? So what is 2 to the power of 3? That would be 8. 2 to the power of 4 is 16. What about 3 to the power of 3? That is 27. 3 to the power of 4, that is 81. 
That is the power function. You can raise a base to a given power. Then we have square root. I'm going to put that here. Total equals SQRT. Add a set of parentheses. Let's find the square root of X. So we don't need Y in this case. What is the square root of 100? That is 10. 144, that is 12. That's the square root function. We will need three variables. Let's create another label and a text box. The third number will be Z. Be sure to change the name too. Then we will create one more variable. Variable Z, post Z. Then we have the max function. Total equals max. Whatever values or variables you place within the max function, the max function will give you the greatest value. What is the maximum number between variables X, Y, and Z? So let's save. I'll refresh that. One, two, three. The highest number is three. 30, 20, 10. The highest number is 30. Then we do have the min function, which will give you the minimum. What is the minimum number between 10, 20, 30? The minimum is 10. 3, 2, 1. The minimum is 1. That's the min function. The next function is an unusual one. It is the pi function. Total equals pi function. So add a set of parentheses. This will print 3.14 and the remaining digits of pi. If you ever need pi, you can use the pi function. The next one's pretty useful. It is the random function. Total equals rand. This will give you a completely random number. I think up to just over 2 billion. Within the parentheses of the rand function, you can list two numbers for a minimum and a maximum. If you're rolling a six-sided dice, the minimum would be one, the maximum would be six. So now we're generating a random number between one and six. We can either raise the minimum or raise the maximum. For a random number between one and 100, within the rand function, the first digit is one, the second digit is 100. So we have 10, 85, 17, 84. If I were to raise the minimum, let's say 90, we'll generate a random number between 90 and 100. Maybe you could use this for a game. Now we're going to go over an exercise. For this exercise, we will have a user enter in a radius, the radius of a circle. Using PHP, we will calculate what the circumference would be, the area, and the volume if that radius is for a sphere. So we will need to accept some user input. We'll do that with an HTML form. So within our HTML document, let's create a form, then close it. The action will equal our index.php file. The method will be post. We will need a label, close it. The label will be radius. Let's add a text box. We need a self-closing input tag. The type will be text. The name will be radius because we're accepting a radius. Then a submit button. Input type equals submit for the value, let's say calculate. That's all we need. Within our PHP script, let's create a local radius variable. We will get the value from this text box via the post super global variable. Let's access the post variable. We are looking for the radius. And now we have a radius. We'll declare a circumference variable. I think that's how to spell circumference. That will be null. To calculate the circumference of a circle, we can follow this formula. Circumference equals 2 
times pi, pi, we can use the pi function, times our variable radius. Then let's echo, let's say circumference equals add a placeholder, then insert our variable circumference. Let's say that this is in centimeters, then I'll add a line break. Maybe the radius is five, I'll calculate that. The circumference is 31.4, and we have a lot of digits after. There's one thing I'm going to change real quick. I'm going to add a line break after our form. For the radius, let's say it's 10. I'm going to hit calculate. Here's our circumference. 62.83 and some change centimeters. We can use the round function to round to a given digit. I would like to round to the second digit after the decimal. Before we display our output, let's reassign circumference equal to use the round function, then pass in our circumference. But I'm going to make one change. Normally, the round function will round a number to the nearest whole integer. To round to a given digit, add a comma, then that digit place. Let's round to the second digit. So our circumference is 62.83 centimeters. Let's also calculate the area and the volume. We'll need a area variable. I'll set that to be null. To calculate the area, let's set area equal to, we'll need the pi function, times our radius to the power of 2. We can use the power function, enter in our radius to the power of 2. Then we can round our area. Area equals round. Within the round function, enter in your area. We would like to round to the second digit after the decimal. Then we will display the area. Area equals our area variable. I think technically that should be centimeter squared. So let's save. I'll enter in a new radius. Okay, so if our radius is 15 this time, I'll calculate that. With the radius of 15, their circumference is 94.25 centimeters. The area is 706.86 centimeters squared. Now we'll calculate volume if the radius is for a sphere. Volume equals null. Volume equals, here's the formula. 4 divided by 3 times pi function times our radius to the power of 3. We can use the power function. We are raising our radius to the power of 3. Then we will take our volume and round to two decimal places. Volume, comma, 2. Then we will display the result with echo. Volume equals, add a placeholder, our volume, centimeters, I think that's cubed technically. If our radius is 5, the circumference is 31.42, the area is 78.54, and the volume is 523.60 centimeters cubed. All right, everybody, well, I thought that would be some good practice with some math functions. Now we're a little more comfortable using them. If you would like a copy of this code, I'll post it in the comments section down below. And well, those are some useful math-related functions in PHP.